Hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. Today we're gonna to be doing some weights, but in the weight room, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of intensity techniques that you can use the next time you hit the gym. So we're gonna talk about certain things you can do using barbells, dumbbells. Actually, the intensity makers that we're gonna talk about today are applicable to almost any sort of weightlifting exercise you wish to do. So let's get started. So on the first method that I'm going to teach you guys is how to pyramid your sets. And everyone knows conventionally how to pyramid your sets. So for example, if we're using an exercise, you use your first set, you warm up for 15 to 20 repetitions, you'll take one to two minutes off, and then you do your first working set, and you do, let's say, eight to 12 repetitions, and then you take one to two minutes off, and then you pyramid your weights, but you bring your reps a little bit lower, right? That's conventional style pyramiding. But the intensity style of pyramiding I'm gonna talk about in this method is gonna be pyramiding nonstop. The only rest time we're gonna use is the time it takes to add a little bit more weight. Now, to make it very effective, you gotta make sure it's an exercise where you can add some weight very quickly. So one of the great ways to do it is doing uh, pulley exercises where you only have a pin, uh, that's a quick way, or a single exercise where it's just like what we're gonna do today, which is gonna be the T-bar roll for your back. It's a pulling movement, and all we're gonna do is keep on slapping some extra plates on for every set. So the way it's gonna work is we're gonna start to do the first set and we're gonna do higher reps, like let's say 15 reps. And then we slap some more weight on and then we're gonna do 10 to 12 reps. And we keep going on until we reach two to four reps on our heaviest sets. But the catch is we keep moving the weight up and decreasing the reps, but we don't take any rest. The only rest we're gonna use is the rest time to add the plate on top. So check it out. Today, you can do this with almost any form of exercise, but today I'm gonna use the T-bar roll. All right, so we're gonna start really light. I'm only having 25 pounds plus the bar. So I'm gonna go for 12 to 15. This is almost like a warm-up set. So this one is gonna be to stretch the back muscles. Like I said, you can use this on any type of exercise, but I find the T-bar row is just an exercise I wanna to hit today, but the T-bar row is a quick method to just keep on adding some weight, as you'll see, as we go consecutively set to set. All right, so here we go, first one. Perfect, see that one was really easy. Now I'm gonna grab some weights. I'm gonna slap on more. So we're doubling the amount here, 25 plus another 25 pound plate. So now we have 50 on the bar plus the bar, which is 45. And now see, that's only like 10 seconds and I'm hitting my second set right now. And I'm gonna go for lower reps, 10 to 12. Nice, now it's getting tougher. We're slapping on more weight. Now, here we go with three plates. Once again, there's only 10 seconds rest. So here we go for the second one. Now, I'm gonna try to hit around eight reps. So see, that's the third set. Now it's starting to hurt. And here we go. Set number four. Once again, that's about 10 seconds pause. Now we're gonna try for about six reps. Six reps on the fourth set. It's getting challenging. Okay, keep going. What do we got here now? Five plates, five plates. So now I need to catch my breath for a second because this is really challenging, guys. Whew, here we go. All right, we've got two more sets because I'm aiming for six sets on this one. So now I'm gonna try for four reps, four reps with five plates. Mm. 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 Woo 
Okay, now, one more set to go. And this last set is gonna be the hardest one. Oh, because now we're gonna push for two reps. Now make sure that you always warm up. My last set is gonna be the most challenging one. Now I'm pulling for two reps. This is really the strength set. Here we go. Okay, so that's it, guys. The pyramid cycle, whew, the pyramid cycle works as such. First set, nice and light. Hit 15 reps. Grab another plate, slap on extra weight. Doesn't need to be much. And then lower the reps slowly, increase the weight. The only rest time you'll have between sets is not to chit chat with your buddy at the gym or check your smartphone. That's not called weight training, guys. You want to improve your results? Be serious, all right? Now, now I'm actually shooting to show you guys how I like to do things, but when I train solo, and especially when I used to, I would always have my headphones on. Um, it was tunnel vision. So we don't just train for fun. We're trained to improve ourselves. This is the first concept. Okay, let's go to the next concept. This one, I want to talk about doing negative reps. So what are negative reps? Well, just like the word says so, what we're going to do now is on any exercise, you hold it for a count of three to four, even five seconds on the negative portion of your repetition. So for example, if you're doing a pulling movements, the negative is when you come back from the pull. If you're doing a pressing movement, now the negative is on the lowering portion. Now I'm going to showcase on the bench press, all right? So when I'm gonna push up, it's gonna explode. And now I'm gonna slowly resist the negative repetition on the bench press for about a four count and then explode back up. Now, there's two ways of doing this. The way I'm gonna show it today because I don't have a spotter, so I'm gonna explode back up. So I'm gonna use a very light weight, okay? So I only have 95 pounds on the bar. Uh, but in, in reality, you would have a spotter or a training partner to do negative reps to always watch you because on the negative rep, you want someone pulling the bar back up to the starting position and you're only resisting on the way down and then someone helps you bring the weight back up. So you're not necessarily pressing it. So in reality, you're going to be able to use um, a little more weight than your conventional exercise. So I'm going to show the negative reps. Uh, this is the second method for increasing intensity in the weight room. Now, just a word, on negative reps, you have to be warmed up because if you start resisting too hard, too early without being warmed up, there's a higher chance of you causing a tear, okay? So we've got to make sure that we're properly warmed up, especially on bench presses. I've said this in the past, I've seen more injuries in the weight room using stuff like bench presses because, well, because people go too heavy, first of all. Second is they don't warm up properly. Third is because they don't use proper form. And last but not least, I think the most important cause is ego lifting. Ego lifting is just uh, when you go in conventional gyms, you want to impress the people around you and you just want to try to always go heavier and heavier than everyone else. So um, this type of training mindset is always going to cause injuries. I've seen uh, people that are young in age um, injure themselves and then they're not they're not more advanced because technically if you tear something or you injure, strain or pull a muscle, you're out of the weight room for at least a couple months, okay? At least a couple months. That's if it's not torn. So um, always be careful. Never mind ego training. I've never been an ego lifter myself. Um, I couldn't care less who was watching and if what they thought of my lifting. I, I couldn't care less, right? So it was all about the results. So I'm going to show you how we do a set of negative repetitions. Check it out. So like I said, usually I'd have a spotter unrack the bar for me. And now here we go. This is my first negative repetition. I'm going to lower slowly in a controlled fashion. One, two, three, four, and even a five count. Once I reach here, I'd explode back up. Now, if you're alone, you want to make sure you're using a lightweight such as I am today. So one, two, three, four five and explode back up. Now, if you're using heavier weight, you want to make sure your spotter is actually the one bringing the weight back up for you. One, two, three, four, five, and press up and continue finishing this set. Whew. <sighs> 
One more. So there you have it, negative reps, second method to increase intensity in the weight room. So try it out, guys. All right, so the next training method to increase intensity, I'm gonna talk about forced reps. Forced repetitions are, once again, just as the name says it, you're actually gonna complete your set by doing the prescribed number of repetitions. So you can do this on any exercise, but once again, make sure you have a spotter. Because I'm alone, I'm gonna use an exercise for the shoulders, and I'm gonna use dumbbells. So everyone has dumbbells at home. Now, I'm gonna do my dumbbell presses for my shoulders, and what you're gonna do is, you're gonna aim for the reps on your set. So for example, if your plan goes for eight to 10 reps, complete your eight to 10 reps, but usually you'll fail after the ninth or 10th. And that's where you increase the intensity by adding three, four, even five force reps, okay? The force reps are gonna be like, you're really struggling to get the weight back up. So I'm gonna demonstrate with the dumbbell press. I'm not gonna go super heavy. I'm just gonna show you guys how the set entails, but imagine that on the 10th rep, you can't move the 11, 12, and 13 rep to complete those real repetitions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna really force the reps where the weight's gonna seem extremely heavy and you have a hard time completing the reps, but that's the intensity measure is we're gonna push through that threshold and add a few more reps onto the set, okay? Now on the negative reps we did earlier, this one here, you'd have a spotter. Same thing on your forced reps. You gotta be very careful because usually if you start to force your rep but you really get stuck, you have no one to help you if you're alone. So always make sure you have a spotter and train very smart, okay? And if you're alone, use an exercise on the forced rep that you know you're not gonna injure yourself if you fail, okay? So check it out. So here we go. I use the dumbbell press. And now I'm gonna start my set. One, two, three, four. These are full reps. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now I could keep going, but imagine this is where we fail, right? So we go one, and that's our 10th and final rep. And now I would wanna stop my set here, but I keep going. And that's where it starts to get very tough. Ah, and that would be the 11th rep. And you're forcing the rep. Ah, that's the 12th rep. And you have a hard time completing. And I'm going to add one more. And this is getting tough for real, actually. Ah, nice. So here we go. So that is how we do force reps. Now, I was just simulating... Uh, but as I was doing the set, it actually got tough for real. But usually, you're gonna do that set, and where you fail, you wanna make sure you add a few reps, maybe three or four, without a spot, where you really force that rep. And once again, I'll say it again, I know I'm repeating myself, anyone watching this, don't just go crazy in the weight room and injure yourself, okay? Force reps, these intensity methods actually should always be advanced. So people who have experience training with weights, should use these techniques, okay? As a personal trainer, I've implemented these types of training styles to people that I've helped out throughout the years, and I've used them myself. I know they're very, um, very effective, and they change the monotony of always using conventional sets in a weight room, okay? So that's the next method. Okay, so on the next intensity method we're gonna use is what I call partial reps. Now, this one I usually coach people to do it only when they're more seasoned, okay? Because a lot of youngsters, when they're starting out, once again, they try to impress people in the gym and add more and more and more weight all the time, and that's where injuries occur, and they don't have proper form. Now, partial reps almost looks like you're cheating your reps, okay? So, as the name implies, we're doing only half of the rep. So, I'm gonna use the incline barbell press to demonstrate how we can do it, but once again, just like any other strategy or methods that I've explained all up till now, you can use these methods on almost any form of exercise. So I'm gonna use uh, an exercise to work the upper portion of the chest, the inclined barbell press. And now, just for demonstration, I'm using only 95 pounds, 25 plates on each side, very light. Uh, usually when I do these types of methods, I have uh, my training partner, which is my wife or my son training with me, or if I was in a gym back in the day, I had a good training partner I could rely on, that I know they're there if I fail. Because once you get to uh, partial reps, you're not just gonna do the partial reps. Almost like the negative, 
you're gonna do the sets that you're supposed to do on your training program. So let's say, for example, your program calls for three sets of eight to 10 reps. You would wanna complete those eight to 10 reps, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep on repping for additional partial reps, okay? So the way it's gonna work here is we're actually gonna start pressing and if I fail at eight or 10, that's when I keep going the partial reps. I'm using very light weight, once again, because I don't have a spotter here, I'm alone, but you'll get the gist of it, okay? So here we go. So on the incline barbell, someone would help you unrack it, and here we go for our regular set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now. On the 10th rep is where I would have almost failed, right? This is where I would want to rack it. Now, having a good spotter, I'm going to add some partial reps, and it's going to look like this. Now, on the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, I've actually added 10 extra reps for the partials, but in reality, having a heavier set of weights I would have failed after three, four, maximum five partial reps. Okay, and you also have a spotter just in case you fail and you get stuck. Okay, so this is another method that's great for increasing intensity. The partial reps is almost like forced negatives, it's the same effect. Um, and this is a great way to increase um, blood volume in the muscle group you're working. If you're a bodybuilder, it's gonna add that growth on your muscle size, but if you're just looking for strength, training as an athlete this is also a really good method to increase strength on some of the compound exercises such as barbells all right so that's the next one all right so the next training intensity method i'm going to talk about is using triceps a lot of people know how to superset so supersetting is just uh, putting two exercises back to back without resting so for example let's say you're doing a squat and once you're done, you rack your barbell and right away you go to a leg extension or maybe another exercise such as the leg press or lunges, okay? Uh, if you're doing barbell curls, right away you drop your barbell and then you would superset with a dumbbell curl. Now, for the purpose of this one, we're gonna talk about tri-sets. So as the name implies, it's three sets or three exercises basically, but tri-set using three sets back to back, but three different exercises. So. Just for the demo, since I'm already on the incline bench, I'm gonna talk about using the incline barbell as you would be repping your set. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna rep out 10 repetitions on the incline barbell press. Immediately, once I rack, I'm gonna grab some dumbbells and now I'm gonna do dumbbell presses, but now I'm gonna flatten the bench or change the angle of the exercise. And immediately after, I'm gonna bring the incline bench back up. I'm gonna finish with dumbbell incline flies to get a nice stretch. So you see how three exercises back to back, so 10, 10, and 10, and then you would rest and restart the process over for let's say three or four sets. So this is another great way to increase the intensity. Usually we'd have like, you know, let's say three exercises, you do a set, you take a rest, you do a set, you take a rest, and so on and so forth for a duration of three or four exercises, three to four sets each, which would take about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how many sets and how much rest time you're doing. Now, by using the tri-setting method, you can slam a very quick and very intense workout for a muscle group within 15 to 25 minutes, right? So you really compress the time and really increase the intensity. Now, all of these intensity methods, they're great, but you can't use them all the time, okay? These are great to, number one, uh, to uh, prevent boredom. Okay, when you're bored and uh, you know, using the same type of exercise program, it creates variety and it motivates you to stick to a program a little bit longer than you go back to your conventional training program after maybe one or two weeks of this. And another way is just stick with your regular plan, but just throw in a few of these intensity methods that I'm talking about today. Just try one. Every time you hit a workout, just try one of them, right? So this one is gonna be the try set and demonstrate starting now. So here we go. Now, just for demo purposes, uh, very lightweight, once again, because this is not the full-fledged workout, and I don't have a spotter, so I'm just gonna use a lightweight here. So now, I would go do my first set, which is the inclined barbell. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, usually on this one, this is, would be heavier, and this is where I would fail on the 10th rep. I'm gonna grab some dumbbells. Actually, my bad. I'm actually gonna flatten the bench just first. So see, this is the only rest time you would have. It's just enough time 
to change the angle of your equipment, but you're not going far. So this is about 10 seconds. Now I'm gonna use the dumbbells. Now I've just changed the angle and I'm gonna go to a flat bench dumbbell press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once again, usually you use heavier weights and you would fail on that. So that's gonna make it much more challenging, but I'm just demonstrating here. And now see, once again, about 10 seconds of rest, grab your dumbbells once again. And usually here's where you get really tired because there's two sets already done. And now I change the angle back to the incline and I'm really stretching the pecs using the incline dumbbell fly. And we'll finish with 10 reps here as well. And 10. All right. So there you have it. Training intensity methods. All right, last but not least, on this sixth method, for increasing your intensity in the gym. This is one of my favorite ones, okay? I use this one a lot. When I used to do a lot of bodybuilding, a lot of weight training, I use it for martial arts as well. The concept is the same, but what we're gonna do is using a weight for a certain exercise and going up in weight for a certain amount of sets and then coming all the way back down. This is what I call up and down the rack. Now, if you look here, I have a complete set of dumbbells. Of course, this is a great method to use when you have access to a gym. If you only have one or two pairs of dumbbells at home, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do. But in this case, I'm gonna use a shoulder exercise, which is called the dumbbell side lateral, all right? And I love to do this exercise with the up and down the rack. Other times I'll just do up the rack or just down the rack, it doesn't really matter. But it's almost similar to the first way where we pyramid and we go nonstop without resting. This is very similar, but it, the rest time is just for me to rack the dumbbells and go to the next set right away. So what I'm gonna do is, and this is gonna be quite challenging now, so bear with me, is I'm gonna start my first set and I'm gonna do only three repetitions. And then I'm gonna increase three reps, increase three reps. And as the saying goes, when I start to fail on my last set for three reps, that's my cue to continue, but backwards. Now I'm coming back down. That's the up and down the rack, so check it out. So here I am, 10 pounds, very light. This should be easy. One, two, and three. Now, first set is always easy, but it's the compound effect that starts to add up. One, two, three. All right. Now I'm up to 20. One, two, and three. All right. So there's already nine reps with a different set of weights. 25. One, two, three. Whew. Now up to 30. One, two, three. And where's my 35s? Right here. 35s are here waiting for me. All right, three reps. One. Two, three, all right. And then you can go one more, one more for 40. 40 for three, let's do it. One, two, three. And this is where I'll stop, all right? So now we go back down, going back down to 35s. That was the cue. Gotta go all the way back down. One, two, three. So three reps is nothing by itself, but once again, it's the compound effect of doing all together. All right, keep it up. Shoulders on fire. Back down to 25s. One, two, 
and three. And you'll feel like the lighter weights you started with, it's almost like they're heavier. Heavier, of course, than the first set. All right, we're almost there. One, two, and three. Okay, two more. So I started with the 10s, down to the 15s now. One, two, and three. One more to go. Woo! Last set, last set. This is where I started. 10s, one, two, and three. Whew. So there you have it. Up and down the rack. It's three reps. You can do this for dumbbell curls. You can do them for shoulder presses. You can do them on chest exercises. You can do goblet squats for your legs. It doesn't matter. But like I said, I use the shoulders just because in this workout, I'm trying to hit different body parts to do a quick workout for the full body today. But the side lateral is a really good way to go up and down the rack and get a quick set. These exercise methods are super effective if you're pressed for time and you just want to get a quick workout in, but as intense as possible. So try it out, guys. I promise you this was tough. So there you have it, guys. These are six different intensity methods you can use to increase um, the intensity in the weight training section of your training programs. Now, use these sparingly. Like I said earlier, always make sure that you just incorporate one at a time, one per workout, or if you want to try them all, um, just do them at least when you're only training one muscle group because um, these will take a lot out of you. And what happens is when you try to increase the intensity and you're not used to it, not only do you get too sore and you can't work out and then your form gets loose, you might cause injuries, like I said earlier. So there's something else too that you gotta consider is your nervous system. A lot of times people don't consider that is not only your, is your body get fatigued, uh, your nervous system when it takes a hit, when it takes a shock, actually you start to break down further, not only physically, but mentally. And then you start to wonder why you're always tired and you don't have that energy to hit the gym. And that's because you're not used to certain intensities, physical intensities of working out, all right? So always use these sparingly. I'm just giving it out there so some of the viewers that like to uh, get some new ideas for working out. So if you have access to a gym, if you have a gym at home in your garage, in your basement, use these. Once again, they can even be applied certain methods with some body weight or elastic band workouts, okay? I'm using them in the weight room. These are just intensity methods that I used to use a lot when I used to train a lot more and used to use these supersets, tri-sets, force reps, negatives, all these. And like I said, my favorite one was the up and down the rack. That's a real burner. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more workouts and training ideas just like this one. Give us a like and I'll catch you in the next intensity video. Take care. Whoosh.